hello and welcome to a presentation about pack rafting part of the Jack River. This presentation will present you with trip logistics, maps, camping options if you want to do this as an overnight trip, and gear lists, and we'll also discuss some of the risks and variables during uh, about this trip. The Jack River is a beautiful stream that flows out of the heart of the mountains uh, down by Cantwell in the Alaska Range. So it flows kind of down into the Broad Pass area and it can provide an opportunity for people who are uh, either experienced or, or somewhat newer pack rafters to be able to access a river that is only accessible really uh, via a pack raft just based on the logistics of getting a boat back in there. The trail into the Jack River begins off the Denali Highway. So you head down the Parks Highway and uh, to Cantwell and at Cantwell you enter the Denali Highway on that side and about four miles in on your right hand side or south side of the road is a large uh, pullout on that side of the road and the trail begins there. The trail is a public easement across Atnaland. Basically the first two miles off the road to the south of the Denali Highway is owned by the Atna Corporation, but there is a, a public trail easement that travels through that first two miles uh, of land. The trail is a ATV trail, so it's basically a, a four, muddy four-wheeler trail that heads across the valley in a fairly straight line back into the Jack River. The trail cuts, uh, it, most people who want to pack raft the Jack River will travel about five miles in on the trail and decide to put in there. This area that you hike into uh, has a nice area to camp, so if you wanted to do this as an overnight trip, you certainly could. The area is, is a really nice area back there where most people put in for this float that is near a large uh, 50 meter waterfall uh, that people ice climb on in the wintertime and there's a, a neat little bench you can climb up onto and get views of the waterfall back in that valley right in that area. If you were thinking about continuing further up the Jack River, the ATV trail blazes across the river at, at, uh, just after five miles and so the, the, it becomes much more difficult to travel uh, on, on the side of the river you're on. So you either need to ferry across the river in your pack raft to continue further up, or uh, it, like I said, it's just much more difficult. So most people decide that's their put in spot and then float out. The, the Jack River flows across the valley through a canyon and then comes out at the Parks Highway just south of where you turn off for the Denali Highway. So it's uh, easily accessible. There's a bridge that flows under the road and on the left or uh, side of the road as you're driving south, there's a nice pull out to leave a shuttle vehicle or a bicycle, depending on how you wanna do your, your shuttle for this trip. This is a map here of the Jack River area. You can see how the trail kind of cuts off quite a bit of distance heading into that portion of the Jack River and then has a, a longer float out to the road. Uh, so it works out great in that way uh, as far as the map goes. So the Jack River float itself starts, uh, if you hike in that five miles, it starts with some class one, class two, splashy, shallow stream. Um, the water level obviously varies a lot based on snow, snow melt and rainfall, but overall um, that, that section is fairly straightforward to get started. You definitely do a little butt scooting on some of the rocks. Uh, as you get, get down the river, it flows into a, a rock-walled canyon, and this is where the more technical water begins. There's definitely some class two where you have to pick some lines, avoid some rocks, and then there's one section where it pinches down, goes through um, in, in decent levels of water. It's, it's a little pool drop, um, certainly class three. In a little lower water, so you actually go around that uh, shelf drop where those rocks are in the water to the left. Still a, a bit technical, definitely worth scouting and potentially even uh, posting someone there 
to uh, with a throw rope to pull people out if someone takes a swim at that area. Uh, after that, it, it opens up into a braided uh, swift mountain uh, stream, uh, class two, splashy class two, with some channel choices and some obstacles. There don't tend to be as many big tree uh, sweepers and strainers as there are on a lot of interior rivers because of where the tree line is there, but there's certainly bushes and root wads and uh, rocks and channel choices uh, as far as obstacles there to be aware of to keep your group together and, and be thinking about as you travel down. This is a picture of the uh, class three pool drop in higher water where the rock, the water's flowing right over the rocks. Obviously you have to pick a fairly technical line through there, but uh, after you get through this area, there's a pool of some calm water that, that gives a nice opportunity to catch your breath, eddy out uh, and, and watch other folks or help other folks if necessary. Many people do this trip as a day trip. Um, it is a long day. It involves a three and a half hour drive, a car shuttle, a six mile, five, six mile hike in, and then a float out, and, and then a three and a half hour drive back. So as a day trip, you need to expect a really long day. But with our long summer hours of daylight and whatnot, it's, it's, it can be very functional as a day trip. So this is some of the stuff you might need as, uh, if you decide to do this as a day trip. Obviously, uh, the pack and the boating gear, um, you've got your pack raft and you've got your paddle and PFD. Uh, helmets highly recommended on this one. Uh, boat repair, um, first aid kit, communication device. There is cell phone range in Cantwell, but as you get into the canyon and, and back into the valley of Jack River, sometimes you lose that. So it's nice to have some other form of communication if, in, if you needed it. Uh, and then, uh, Obviously, mountain weather and um, uh, basic needs, food, water, um, and the gear you need for mountain weather. Uh, this is a trip where the potential of swimming exists. Uh, cold mountain water, I would certainly have a dry suit as well. Uh, I wouldn't do this trip without, without that piece of gear. It makes self-rescue and um, uh, dealing with your situation way harder if you um, end up uh, not have it, needing a dry suit and not have This is a picture of the pool drop in uh, lower water conditions. You can see that rock sticking up there. Um, the, uh, this person went around to the left, uh, close to that rock wall. There's a channel that flows through and into the pool directly after that. With all the boating gear and clothing that are necessary for a day trip, you actually don't necessarily add that much in an overnight trip. Um, a nice lightweight tent or shelter, uh, a sleeping bag, uh, some waterproof stuff, maybe a stove and pot if you want, and, and you can add this stuff in and make this an overnight trip uh, for this area as well. The trail heading out there, as I mentioned, is pretty muddy and swampy. The ATVs tend to tear it up. Um, it, uh, so keep that in mind heading out that you're gonna probably have wet feet right from the get-go. Um, this area has abundant caribou and moose uh, down into the valley. They obviously move around a little seasonally, but uh, they, they can be an awesome opportunity to view some wildlife. With those come the bears and the wolves. Um, there are uh, sheep certainly in this valley in the high country, the more difficult terrain. Um, and uh, there's a couple beaver dams back in this area as well. So beaver sightings are very possible. There is a beautiful waterfall. There's waterfalls kind of all along the valley, but there's definitely one distinctive beautiful waterfall that's about 50 meters high. That's right back in the area most people put in on the Jack River. It uh, has a little bench you can climb up to on kind of the far side of the valley and you look back up valley to check it out. If you're feeling really spunky, you can climb up. It, it becomes somewhat of a technical scramble, but you can climb up all the way to the ridge top, kind of check that area out. You can even traverse across and come back down the, the broad ridge on the other side of the valley. So if you're camped out and you get there at a reasonable hour and you're looking for a little extra, that would be an extra hike to do. Um, 
The outflow plain from that waterfall has some nice little gravel patches uh, with great access to water uh, for camping out. Uh, it's a great idea to download the uh, GPS app to make sure uh, that uh, you or have a GPS with you and use that uh, as a backup and kind of keep track of where you are and keep track of your timing, especially if the clouds roll in and the visibility goes down. But the overall, the navigation on this trail is pretty darn straightforward. This is a picture of the pool directly after that little plastery drop. Um, this was during lower water, so people were going around on the left-hand side close to that wall. And, and there was someone posted there on that big rock with a throw bag, uh, good visibility, letting people know that things, the line was clear. Um, and you can see that you could portage around this right side in most water conditions if, if you weren't feeling this pool drop. Um, and, or even if you just wanted to go scout it out. There are many risks to consider when thinking about a trip like this pack rafting trip. Um, one of the ones that uh, is especially so when you're talking about the boating risks is the cold water. Um, you know, it's coming right out of the mountains and uh, it uh, swim in this, an unexpected swim without a dry suit in this water really can change the uh, dynamic of this trip and make and present some some significant hazards. Um, some, there are many river hazards on the river, including rocks. Um, during that canyon, there's some uh, slightly undercut uh, rock walls that can present hazards. And then you've got the, the stuff that falls into the water. So some of those alders and bushes and, and occasional trees that um, can present entrapment things as well as the rocks that can, can all be either impact items or present entrapment. So being able to comfortably control your boat and being ready um, if an emergency situation happens, making sure people have throw bags and rescue training and things like that. Also a helmet for me is pretty much a, a mandatory go-to for this. Um, just if I do end up out of my boat, I wanna make sure I don't uh, get my head on something as I'm floating down the river. Um, this is a wilderness area, so wildlife is certainly an issue. Um, as you um, are in the first part of the hike and down into the valley, there are places where uh, the brush gets a little more dense, and so surprising a bear or surprising a moose could be more uh, of an issue. You wanna, wanna make sure to make noise, um, use your group size for protection, try to have a decent sized group so that you minimize some of those risks for negative encounters. And then having some options if you did uh, um, have an encounter uh, like bear spray would be an option. Uh, slips, trips, and falls are always a possibility. Um, the trail heading in is fairly straightforward, but it is muddy and slippery for sure. So it's something where you're gonna wanna be aware of that uh, on your hike in. Uh, and then mountain weather. Uh, certainly storms and winds and uh, various mountain weather can roll in at pretty much at any time of the year in, in this area. So it, you want to be prepared as far as your clothing goes, as far as your um, navigation goes, and, and making sure that you've got your, your options if you need them. So there are some additional resources available. Uh, there's a link to a uh, Google Drive that's got this presentation in it uh, without the audio, of course. It's got the maps, PDF map of the area, um, as well as the gear lists in PDF form that you can download and take with you. Um, if you end up having any questions or comments about this presentation, you can contact uh, me at Outdoor Adventures and uh, Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy your trip down the Jack River.